Hi, I'm Mill and I'm one of the co-designers for Library Labyrinth. In Library Labyrinth, you and your companions find yourselves in a cursed library. All of the monsters and terrible things have come to life and escaped from their books. Your task is to build a team of inspirational women from fiction and history who are going to help you to capture these terrors and put them back in their books where they belong. In order to do that, you'll be taking book characters from the various category stacks in the library and matching the skill symbols on the book character cards to the skill symbols on the terror tiles. So for example, the basilisk needs the hourglass in the blue diamond, the fist in the purple circle, and the athlete in the gold star. Imagine you've got Queen and Zynga and Joe March in your hand. Queen and Zynga has the blue diamond and the gold star, and Joe March has the purple circle. So together, they can capture the basilisk. You can take up to three actions on your turn. The standard actions include movement, including a basic move, move and capture, or move and reshelve, flipping a tile from its dark side to its lit side, rotating a lit tile to change the pathway, taking a book card from any of the category stacks in the library, or donating, receiving, or swapping cards with another player on the same space. If you don't want to take all three of your actions, or someone else would benefit from it more at that particular moment, you can also pass one of your actions to the next player. Each player's turn consists of three phases. The action phase, where you'll take your three actions. The disturbance phase, where you'll discover how your actions have disturbed the curse. And the curse phase, when the curse will move on to the next section of the library. Let's say you're the pink meeple here. You can move as far as you like through the library, as long as the path is lit and clear. So you can't move through these bookcases, past these terrors or shelves, or through these tiles that are still in darkness. But you can go all the way through here to capture the basilisk. And that whole move and capture only costs you one of your three actions. Once you've captured it, it joins in Zynga and Joe, they all group together like this, and now they only take up one of the six spaces in your hand. So what do you do with it now that you've captured it? They're wrestling with it and it's got to go somewhere. You need to take it to one of these reshelving points. Again, it has to be one that matches one of the skill symbols on the terror tile. So the basilisk can only be reshelved at the blue diamond, the purple circle, or the gold star. The purple circle is available here, but you can't get to it right now as there's a bookcase in the way. But what you can do is move along to the adjacent tile and rotate it so the path is clear and then you can get to the shelf and put it back. Once you've reshelved a terror, the terror tile and the shelf tile are placed next to the stack of book character cards that correspond to their category. These book characters have done their job now, so they get discarded and you win a reward for completing that category. The rewards are things like special items or special booster actions that are going to help you move around the library and capture terrors. For example, the Spear of Minerva counts as two blue diamonds instead of needing to use a book character for these skills. The Secret Passage lets you move through a bookcase so you don't need to spend another action rotating the tile. Or the Library Card lets you pick up two books at once instead of one at a time. In order to win the game, you need to reshelve a terror for each of the six book categories. But it's not that easy. The curse is still moving around the library, causing all kinds of chaos. After your third action, you'll draw one of these Disturbance cards. This card is going to show you which of the four tiles around the curse token is affected on this turn. So for example, on this card, it's the top right tile that will be affected. It's currently dark, so it gets flipped over to its lit side, and in this case, reveals another terror. This card is then discarded, and the curse token moves on to the next junction between the floor tiles. The curse token moves one junction clockwise around the outside of the grid at the end of every turn, and the number of cards in this disturbance deck specifies how many turns you'll have in your game, depending on the number of players. If this deck runs out of cards, you've run out of time and lose the game. Another way you can lose the game is if more than five terrors are active on the grid at once. So when that sixth terror appears, the library is overrun and you lose. So there's two ways to lose, running out of time or being overrun with terrors, and one way to win, reshelving a terror for each of the six book categories. Make sense? You're ready to try your first game of Library Labyrinth. Good luck!